from a tiki hut. And uh, <coughs> after last week's uh, visit by the, the lovely ladies, Patricia at Sow and Grow, and um, Kelly and her family from uh, Kelly's Kitchen Garden, um, I'm just going to um, invite you all to take a look around our plots, which is the Little Farmer's Farm plots down here in God's Country, Wigan. Uh, if you're new to the channel, and, and many of you are new to the channel because of what happened with Kelly's update this year, this week, and also Rob at um, uh, Essions Rob, I'll put these all down below actually, uh, because there's Terry at robotic, robotic Allotment Gardening on a budget, Terry's given us a shout this week, Pag the Drum, loads of people, thank you very much, you're ace. Um, but Kelly's video is fantastic. If you look at Kelly's Kitchen Garden, you'll, you'll get a, a taste of what we got up to last week. I lost all of my footage from the, um, from the plot visit um, with, Ke with Kelly and Patricia last week. But we had Kelly, Bramall, Dan, her husband. We had the kids down, the two girls. Fantastic, lovely girls that they were. They came down last week. Patricia came down with Johnny, her husband. Um, a, wonderful, a wonderful couple. Those two are. They were just brilliant people. We had a fantastic day. <coughs> but I haven't got any uh, editing software at the moment. I've not got nothing. I've not got nothing. And that's Wiganese. Uh, so, uh, what I will do is I'll just give you a rambling walk around of the plot and introduce you to our plots. And hopefully you'll get a taste of what we've got going on down here. I'm in the Tiki Hut. This is my 8 foot by 8 foot shed. And um, built by my own two fur hands which is solar power and all, our, all the rest of it. If you look back through our videos, you'll see uh, the step-by-step -step way that we made this shed. Um, the, ch the, the channel is all about, basically, um, sharing information that we get about organic growing with you guys, and hopefully you guys can give us hints and tips uh, as we go along. And together we can sort of get better at what we're doing and be more self-sustained vegetables-wise organic vegetables wise that is so i'll show you what we've got growing on down here and thank you very much once again to patricia she gave me this lovely mug there's a couple of mugs one for me and one for the lady farmer that we got from patricia and that's i love to, i love to garden sorry i love gardening from my head to my toes i love gardening from my head to my toes to my toes just about works that doesn't it right anyway we'll um, we'll crack on as I say, this will have to be all in one sort of shot. I'll pause it and then carry on around the garden because my laptop blew up last week and I've not got the editing software, so bear with me with that. Normal service will be resuming shortly with that. I hope you, hope you enjoy our little plot tour. All right. Happy days. See you in a bit. Hi there guys, I'm going to start you all off up at the top end where um, the first structure that I ever built on these plots is situated and this is on the original plot side, this one and it is a timber framed 4mm clear twin wall polycarbonate greenhouse that myself and Magical Michael from the plot next door built. I built the original structure, but Mix gave us a load of uh, assistance over the last year and a half that we've been doing this. And um, I'll show you inside what we've got growing on inside here. Okie dokie. Inside, the timber framed, four millimeter clear twin wall polycarbonate greenhouse. We've got tomatoes. We've had tons of tomatoes from inside this greenhouse, from the six plants that we planted. I think actually there were um, ten tomato plants in total that we had, that we planted in. And we've got a couple of peppers as well, and a cucumber. That cucumber has been producing cucumbers now for about six weeks. And um, we've had, I think in grand total, we've had 13 cucumbers off it and there's those three that are left there I'm not sure how many more cucumbers we're going to get off it but it is still flowering as you can see there's a little baby cucumber 
be down there. But we're getting this powdery stuff on it. I don't want to sort of go on a downer, but I'm going to have to treat that with a bit of milk. A little bit of milk in the water. Give those leaves a spray and hopefully it'll get rid of this powdery, mildewy type of stuff that's on those leaves and bring them back to health. Okay. These are sun gold tomatoes. And um, last week when the kids came down, when Daisy and Lily came down with Kelly, they were all getting stuck into these because they're really, really sweet, tasty little tomatoes, those are, sun gold. And we're still getting plenty coming on them, as you can see. I've got uh, three plants of the sun gold in there. Got striped stuffer as well, so where is those striped, striped stuffers? There they are down there at the back. Get ready for harvesting. I plant marigolds in there because the marigolds deter green fly and um, they also look quite pretty. And so we've got the peppers in here as well. I think they're called Corno del Toro, which are the long sweet peppers. And then we've also got some of, or we should have. We don't got any on here. Oh, I must have picked them all off. Um, the bell peppers. In the the bell peppers came first, actually. On the fruitings. So yeah. Okay. So this is the the uh, first greenhouse or first structure that I built, uh, and we built this last summer, the beginning of last summer. Okay. Which is when we first got the plots. So we're quite new to this allotment plot growing okay we're attempting a little uh, mini orchard and this is the sort of embryo of our mini of our mini orchard that we've got at the back on the lady farmer's side this is plot two which we picked up this year uh, mid-february and again we've done a lot of um, clearing out and, uh, and planting up up at this top end. That's a conference pear tree. That's another Malus domesticus, um, known as Laxton's superb. Malus domestica is uh, basically it's an apple tree, but the variety is uh, Laxton's superb. But uh, due to the weather conditions and everything that we've had this year, it's not done very well. We've had a lot of dry, we had a, we had drying out through a dry spell, and then we had a lot of swelling through a wet a wet spell. <coughs> Excuse me, <laughs> a wasp just flown into me ear. That wasn't very nice, and uh, it's not done the fruits any good whatsoever. We'll get some apples off it, but not too many. The pears are doing much better. The conference pears are doing better than the apples. That's a cherry tree that didn't produce anything this year because we only uh, transplanted it um, in June this year across to this um, position. But we've got hopes for that for next year. These are our French climbing beans. The loads of videos showing you how to make these um, structures Climbing structures, beds, raised beds, netted hoop tents, all the rest of it, polytunnels. Um, so if you look through our back catalogue, you'll see those. This is actually uh, more successful than we thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. We didn't think that the, um, the beans would climb as high as that. Because we've got Blue Lake, a variety called Blue Lake along this side. And then we've got the Violet on this side. The Violet French climbing beans on this side of the structure and um, they're actually outgrowing the structure I mean that could probably be another two or three feet higher than it is and we'd still get the uh, still get the climbs coming on we put these on the ends of the canes so you don't poke your eye out <laughs> it's to cover the canes it's a good tip that actually make sure you're covering these canes especially if you've got little ones knocking around okay now you're catching us at the moment at the back end of um, our first phase of our growing season. So all these peas that we had in this bed, this little pea bed, um, we've taken now. So all of those old pea plants need to come out really. Because we're not going to get too much growth coming back off those. So that's our little pea area, our little pea cage. In here we've got um, spinach down there. 
and this is a um, I think it's about a five foot by four foot bed this one on the lady farmer's side and we've got the um, lettuce in there and some spinach in there we've also got a nice crop of horse's tail which is an invasive kind of a weed and I believe you can eat it but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend it I don't think there are videos online about horse's tail it's like an ancient type of a fern that's very difficult to eradicate uh, but there you go that's what we've got there all right we'll be harvesting some of that tomorrow on tomorrow's episode do a lot of harvesting tomorrow and a lot of planting too this is our ancient cooking apple tree and this one's a bit more successful than the new apple tree that we've got on there i think he's more used to all the conditions and the the wacky weather that we get down here and uh much more prepared i chopped this tree back a lot last year because it was shading a lot of things out on this side when i say last year it wasn't last year i'm telling you lies i chopped this tree back quite a lot in probably march of this year um just to um uh, you know to increase the sort of light that we're getting through onto this uh, which is the lady farmer's greenhouse this was an existing greenhouse that was on the plot when we got it as i say we got it early this year february this year and uh, i'll just show you inside here as well because we've got we've got grapes we've got grapes coming in here never had grapes in my life before of course i've eaten grapes before but i've never grown them before and um I really, did th I really did think about two or three months ago we were going to lose all of these grapes, but thankfully they've all come back strongly. Got some nice bunches coming on. In fact, they're a little bit too um, crowded, those. Hope they're going to be okay. I'm going to have a chat tomorrow, tomorrow if he's on, with um, our friend, the wise old elf, Joe. And get some more tips on that this tomato plant that we've got in the bucket um was a branch that fell off one of the sun goals one of the three sun goals that are in um, my polycarbonate greenhouse and so what i did is i put some rooting compound on it some organic rooting compound on the bottom of the branch this stuff and then put it into the compost down there and the compost's um it had a mix with the blood fish and bone in it as well and the blood fish and bone with the rooting compound has turned it into another plant as you can see and we've, we've probably had about 20 or 30 already of these um, sun gold tomatoes off it they ripened from the bottom up and um yeah that was a branch that fell off the tomato plant will re-root itself it can grow roots out of any part of it and when you get these, um, oh, where, where are they now? I can't see, I can't see any that are, that are on this now. You get little spurs that grow in um, in the crook that come out like that. Uh, little suckers that come out and they can be turned into new, new tomato plants as well. I'm digressing a little bit now because I'm just, uh, just rambling, rambling to you. But um, here's another cucumber plant. There's five on that cucumber plant. There's about four or five, I think, that are on that one there. We keep getting these cucumbers coming and coming and coming, uh, which is great. You know, whenever short of cucumbers, the kids love them. Uh, and they're relatively simple to grow. They're quite easy to grow cucumbers, as you'll see on other people's channels and on my channel as well. You can, uh, you can get some tips if you look down the back catalogue about these cucumbers and i've got some starts in here which i really must get out um pak choy joy choy this is flowering pak choy um tatsuma things like that some japanese stuff there's some leeks down there that's a little chili pepper plant there that i'm going to do something with tomorrow because it's suffering a little bit in the position that he's in there we've got more peppers these ones are ripening up down there actually um as you can see these are ripening on the plant uh, and there's some more bell pepper there's a right one at the back there they've got a bit of sunburn on them though as well might be a little too hot for them in here could have done with shading those out but anyway you know you win some you lose some boys and girls don't you it's all about the fun 
My little boy's called Bradley, and uh, this is his cage. He's a three-year-old monkey, and he lives in here. He's not in today, though. We've uh, we've released him into the wild for the weekend. But uh, if you look inside there, we've got the rainbow chard, which unfortunately started to bolt. So I'm going to take those off. But we've got some lovely leaf growth down there. We've been taking leaves off this. Every time I've come down, I must have taken about six or seven leaves off it, and it's still growing rampantly. Uh, that's the bright yellow. So we've got the rhubarb. Sorry, it wasn't rain, but it was rhubarb chard on that side. And we've got bright yellow lights chard on that side. And then as you work your way down through Brad's cage, we've got a lot of stuff that does need to be uh, clipped back. Anyway, I'll have to go. I'll see you in a bit. All right. Because the video's about to go off. I'm reaching the limit. I'll pick it up with you tomorrow. Catch us later. All right. See you after. Bye-bye. I'll leave you with the uh, with the, the plot. See you in a bit. Bye.